what they look like. Heard it called a squid in a bowl. <laughs> there are a few people, and again, a, I mean, a few people seem to be saying they're great. I don't just find them rubbish, right? They frustrate me. You probably could use a drip tip, but you'd have to be very careful because they're plastic and they crack. The first thing you notice is the drawer is very, very tight. It's like sucking a bloody golf ball through a, a hose pipe. That's crap. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Let me turn off my echo machine. How are you doing? It's by the grace of God we're here tonight. <laughs> or the magic PC elf. Uh, I hope everyone's enjoying their weekend or have enjoyed their weekend. And uh, I really enjoyed everyone hanging out with me Friday night even though we did have a, a little bit of a problem. Um, I guess I should have went to college for computers to understand why they're not working. So, um, Dave's not here. Dave is in Munich. It's Oktoberfest. Yay! <laughs> Wish we could all be there, but we can't. So, I am here tonight, and we're going to cover a few things, and uh, maybe not so few things. I did want to go over an update from Friday's show on this. I think you can still hear me. It is the bottle mod that I came up with. And I really didn't think about it, but the dual coil cartomizer that's in there, you have to make a hole for absorption. And I had taken a hacksaw and cut a small hole in it. And then Andy from Vapor Mist, uh, we were talking later on after the show, had said that he would probably advise using a punch to make the hole. Not only to make it smaller, because I, I did have problems with absorption too much, but also because of the metal shavings. And this will show you that when you come up with a mod, you have to have a, 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 a collective thought of what your mod's going to do, how it's going to perform, uh, the safety factors, uh, is it going to, um, how is it going to affect the juice, the vapor delivery, and all that, which is a great idea. Um, now, there may not be enough metal shavings there to be worth it, I mean, worth the worry, but that's that was a very good point, and I think Andy Monday is going to bring up uh, the way of punching uh, the, the, the dual coil cartomizer without actually making it flat. I mean, to me, if you took a hammer or a nail and punched it, um, there, we'll go back to me so you don't have to look at that. I'm sitting with my hands looking at the picture. <laughs> it's, it's not coming through. Uh, but if you took a nail and punched it, uh, to me, you, I, I would think it would uh, make it out around. But uh, quite possibly Andy has a solution for that. So I am very interested in seeing because I do want to modify my hole on the dual coil cartomizer. Um, I do have it sitting around here somewhere. Where did it go? Where did my stuff? There it is. I vaped about halfway through. Okay. And then, uh, then I turned to my, uh, my trusty 
306. I found some juices I wanted to try. I didn't want to commit a whole cardamizer. I still, I'm still out of RY4. And um, the RY High 5 hasn't made it here yet. I swear when it comes, I'm, I'm going to probably go through a whole bottle. So I've been trying different things. And if you go through different bottles or different juices through the day, a 306 is perfect because you're not dedicating a cardamizer to just that one taste. And after a couple of and blows, you know, the taste is gone and it's not ready for the next one. So, But I've been uh, vaping on my dual coil cardamizer. I think I got that uh, 420 in there. I filled it up with uh, Friday with the dual condoms. So, um, so uh, I am. Oh, that's right. No us, no always or so or something like that. I'm going to try to be a professional broadcaster. I have made some purchases, and uh, this first purchase, uh, I, the reason I got it, is because when I bought. A, uh, a particular attachment for my uh, silver bullet. I felt that the battery connector was a little too long, but I tightened it anyways. And immediately after that, I'd taken it off and I, I, I used a cardamizer. And uh, I'm going, well, heck, that cardamizer must be old. Because uh, I never throw anything away. I, I do have them segregated in my box, the old ones and the new ones. But uh, I put it on, and I said, well, that's not working. So I put another one on, and I said, that's not working either. So I, 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 I figured quite possibly I had done a Andy Sutton. Uh, I'm not going to put his name on that particular problem, but we all know that Andy had put a device on his silver bullet that had pushed the uh, connector pin in so far that uh, the other attachments he had wouldn't work. So I thought and I had read on some of the forums, that using an adapter, not only to attach other sizes or, or different devices to your mod, but also it's going to protect if you drop your mod from, from any ill effects happening to the uh, 510 attachment. Now, what I am getting, I'm getting, it should be in here by Friday, is a 510 to 510 extension. And I am going to use that with, drum roll please, a Ego Mega Tank. I believe they say that it'll hold five milliliters. It's uh, two 3.6 ohm coils in there, which makes it, it uh, I think 1.6 altogether. From what the vendor was saying, I don't know. I'm not an electrician, and I don't have any of those funny equipment to measure anything. Um, I'm also getting the um, clear version of the uh, dual, uh, the dual coil Ego Mega Tank. Um, but I needed that extension because the Ego Tank, although it's a 510 connector. It has a sleeve around it. Uh, uh, let me show that one more time for maybe. See how the 510 connector sits up in there? Now, if I were to put that on my silver bullet, it, it wouldn't, the, the connector wouldn't even make it close to uh, the battery connection. So I needed a, a slight modification. Now, I'm going to use it in that application. Also, I'm getting what they call, I think, a mini. Uh, 510 to 510 connector. I thought that that adapter I'm getting, the 510 to 510, is quite skinny. And with that fat tank on top of it, it might make it look weird. So the, the, the mini I'm getting, and uh, I forgive you, forgive me, I don't have a picture of it. Um, it's a little wider and it's a little shorter. So when that uh, tank get and when I, when I put it on there it should look relatively normal it ju it'll just be a tank with like a, a like a silver ring around it so uh, I don't know maybe I'll look high class and I'll, I'll look more normal when I step into my 64 jag <laughs> now um, I'm also getting a dual coil clear uh, cardamizer 
Uh, a few weeks ago, I had, what was it, a few weeks? I don't know. I've done a couple of cat shows and my show and now Dave's show. Um, I had talked about absorption. No, oh, wait a minute. It was Friday. And uh, the cat was able to show us that uh, the absorption on a dual coil cardamizer using the condom method uh, actually doesn't go all the way through. So uh, I was intrigued, and I want to get my hands on a clear one. Now, I don't know. I can't remember exactly if the review said that the uh, plastic shell um, would get loose and crack or come off, like maybe some ap other applications like a CE2 with a clear shell. So I'm I'm really intrigued and I can't wait till it gets here. It should get here by Friday because it's coming relatively close from uh, from me to here. So um, now while I was on that website, I ran across something that was really interesting. I had done uh, some research on batteries. I mean I'm a battery idiot, you know, but. Uh, I like to learn. I, I like to watch the, the Disney, uh, not the Disney Channel. I like to watch the History Channel. I like to learn uh, stuff of where we came from. So batteries naturally, since they've become a huge part of my life, um, I thought I'd do a little bit of research. And on the website, it had here. Let me show you here. Uh, uh, boop. Is the nickel metal hydrid I think that's right. Hydrid battery. And the uh, vendor said, or the vendor's website basically says that, that it is the same size as an 18650. Now, that particular battery, it's not lithium ion. So, cat has a parrot and I have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think it's time. No, the little one's already home. Wait a minute, Sunday, right? Yeah. Um, the nickel battery actually has to have its own special charger. And uh, you can't use the chargers from your lithium ion for this. That's one of the drawbacks. Um, also, when you're charging your battery, uh, according to the vendor and the website, it does have a red LED light, but the LED light never goes off. Okay, so I don't know if you can find a charger that does have a light that goes off. I don't know if it's a normal application for nickel batteries. Um, we'll have a guest coming up here pretty soon after the break. And uh, we'll ask uh, this person what he thinks about these batteries. And I really, really do uh, uh, take his advice seriously. Um, but uh, some of the reviews on a battery was uh, about a six hour application. Uh, so someone had recommended buying two, uh, kind of like the auto bats or the small manual batteries that had the 180 milliamps. So you would be constantly charging. Um, but they do offer and this is extraordinary. They are rated for 4.8 volts. Now, if you're using a 1.5 atomizer or cardamizer at 4.8, that equals 15.36 watts. <laughs> I mean, that's, what is that, 3 watts higher than a, uh, a, a Darwin? Um, so you might run into a problem where you, you push your button and <laughs> darn, I just blew another Eddie, you know. Now, uh, 4.8 at a, at a regular cardamizer, which is 2.0 ohms, uh, you're looking at 11.52 uh, watts or 12 watts. I think that's with well within the uh, Darwin usage. I don't know, the person that will be coming up has a Darwin and we'll be asking him also. Um, now 4.8 at 3.0 ohms is 7.68 watts. Now a silver bullet, I know all these numbers are kind of flying at you and you're going, oh stop, don't give us no more numbers. <laughs> but what's important about vaping and batteries is that you have a combination to satisfaction, I guess you could say. First, you have the level of voltage you're using, 
and then you have the the level of resistance and then uh, of course you have the, the the juice so all three factors are going to factor into your pleasure the watts like hi-fi had said you can treat like a temperature gauge uh, the higher the watts the more temperature the the better the vape the stronger the vape the bigger the throat hit uh, depends on the juice, you know, if you have a really wimpy juice and you got like 30,000 volts going through it, you know, it's like, I ain't getting no throat hit. But, so if you buy a 4.8 battery, or if you're vaping at 5 volts, uh, traditionally a vendor will let you know that you should carry a higher ohm cartomizer. Like if you vaped at uh, 5 volts, uh, they may recommend a 4 volt, not only for you know, keeping your <laughs> blisters off your tongue from a hot vapor coming through. It might be a possibility. I don't know. I've never gone that high. But uh, to, to save the life of your Addies, you know, there's a, there's a real thin metal on that coil. And you throw all kinds of energy through it. And, you know, it's, it, it, there's a wrong a possibility of it getting so hot it melt and just break. And you just spent like $2 or $5. And, you know, I saved some money on this battery. But... It's eating my addies like crazy. A 3.7 silver bullet, which I have and have enjoyed thoroughly since December of last year, uh, runs at uh, the 18650 at 3, 18650 battery at 3.7, which is 1.1 lower than these nickel batteries available on this website. If I run a 1.5 ohm cartomizer through it, or Addy, or anything rated at 1.5, I'm looking at 9.12, or 9 watts of power. Now, for me, 9 watts is that's where I want to be. I, I When I first started vaping, I was using the 2.0s, and I wasn't getting the throat hit. I really wasn't getting satisfied until I came across the 1.5s. And uh, once I came across the IMR batteries, Hey, <laughs> it, it just opened up my eyes even more. It's like opening up a Christmas present. And go, oh, I wasn't expecting this. Thanks, Aunt Mildred. <laughs> so if you buy a higher volt battery, try to watch what your ohms are on your cartomizer and Addy. If you're new to vaping, you'll find out real soon that you just spent $10 on Addies and they all popped on you. So, But we're going to be getting some advice on these nickel batteries, even though they're 4.8. Okay, and I think they charge up to uh, 5.8, you know, um, basically five to six hours to charge them. I think some of my 18650s only take a, a few hours. So um, and you'll find out something interesting also about nickel batteries, because you may get a nickel battery like in your, in your, in your cordless phone. You go, wow, I'm having to charge this thing about every hour now. Well, I'll tell you why as soon as we come back. And uh, don't hold your breath. Hopefully this will work. Back in a minute.
Um, let me switch some things around. This 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 might come out great, or this might just all go to pot. But uh, <laughs> um, still getting used to my new toy here. Uh, I have a special guest that's going to go over these batteries with us, and it's Cat. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, look, Dave's not there. Oh no. Let's see. Hold on, people. Oh. Eh. Mm. That uh. He he. You were there. Uh, hold on. Uh, uh mm. look at this room. Ma, the TV's out again. What are we gonna do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to listen to the funk mess. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, um let me see. <laughs> Everybody can see me. <laughs> can I hear you, Dave? I don't know. Chat room, can you hear me? Chat room. Yes. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is there anybody in there? <laughs> oh, Dave. Hi, Mike. Oh, hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm doing okay. I, I should explain to everybody that it's taken quite a bit of different to get this to work because uh, Mike's using the Windows version of uh, Wirecast, and I'm a Mac man. Yeah. So it's going to sound really rather weird, as though I'm speaking to you from the laboratory. There's a reason for that. I'm on the laboratory. <laughs> and if you guys could see what I see, <laughs> you would have tune in more often. <laughs> or not. Or not. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, um, <laughs> I, uh, Sorry, Mike. I'm, just, I'm just reading the chat while I'm sitting here. <laughs> the jokes have started already. <laughs> oh, well, I wish I could read them too. But if I tell you, if I do one more thing on this computer, I'm going to lose everybody. You know, I don't know. Hey, Cat was a big sensation Friday in her uh, nightgown from what I hear. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry I was working and I missed it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry I was sweating like a pig out here trying to get my thing to work. <laughs> you might want to rephrase that. <laughs> I was trying to get my wire cast to work and sweating like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I had uh, I had skyped you earlier in the day when I came across these uh, nickel metal. Hydrid batteries, and you had hydride. Yeah, and you had mentioned that uh, you had run into them once before. I've, I've I've used metal hydride a lot, and there are so many drawbacks in comparison with um, lithium ion. Are just not worthy of consideration. Now, what were the major drawbacks that you found? Well. Not quite as bad as, as my cards, but they do exhibit a memory effect, um, badly. Uh, uh, capacity is sadly diminished versus anything else. Uh, it's actually shocking. And there's only been one or two comments in chat from the likes of Griffin, whose opinion I trust, um, that, uh, that basically translate, it's just not very good. You don't get any one light out. You'll probably get a fifth of the time it takes to charge them in runtime, and that's just not good. Yeah, that's a, the one thing I read, and I, correct me if I'm wrong, that these actually discharge sitting in a drawer faster than, I guess, under normal use. Is that right? I mean, the discharge rate you're sitting around is... Well, you, they, they, they'll discharge over the course of a fairly short period of time relative to... Um, quickly, a lithium ion will self discharge. Mm. Um, yeah. It's just not. Mike, I'm going to put some headphones in here because I'm working on speaker at the minute and I can hear a bit of an echo occurring. Just give me two seconds while I do that. Okay, I'll, I'll sing. You sing. <laughs> 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 
Shan <laughs> Chantilly lace and a pretty face, a ponytail, a hanging down, a wiggle and a walk and a giggle and a talk. Woo! Makes the world go round. They make me act so funny, make me spend my money, make me feel real loose like a long nest goose. <laughs> oh, baby, that's a what I like. <laughs> <laughs> God help us all with the copyright, eh? <laughs> hey, you know what I found out? Happy birthday! Happy birthday is actually owned by Time Warner. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's ridiculous. You know, I mean, that's that's like the EPA wanting to register your uh, gas emissions. You know. <laughs> Oh, Lord, they take plenty of money off me, then. <laughs> Especially if somebody manages to spike me, uh, me juice with menthol. <laughs> coming back to the batteries, the bottom line on those 4.8 things is don't go there. It's just not even worth thinking about. It's horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, John once just said in chat that his camera batteries, uh, batteries discharge within a week without a picture taken. Um Nickel metal hydride, according to very boring, or boom more easily. Um, road hogs on a bit of cap, captain's not being too soft and squishy. I don't quite know why. Um, yeah, you know, lithium ion is the way to go, lithium pot, without doubt. Not nickel metal hydride, and definitely not an ICAD. Waste of time and money. Well, the the one thing I've also read about Nick, let me get back into shot here. Uh, the nickel batteries is they have to be calibrated. In other words, you have to drain them all the way down to zero and then charge them back up. Because if you were to drain them halfway and charge them, the battery only remembers to charge to that point. Is that true about the the nickel batteries? That's that's nic nickel cadmium nickel batteries are very very bad. But Nickel metal hydride, not so much, but they do benefit from the full cycle at least once a month, as in completely drained and then recharged again. And more to the point, if you if you do do what I advise everybody to do with uh, lights, which is just charge them up overnight, they'll die uh, within a short period of time. Um, my picked phones that we had had uh, nickel metal hydrides in. Within a year, all the batteries in them were shot because they're constantly in the cradle. Take the battery in the cradle because you brought it up to be tidy. And the batteries are just dead in mm -hmm. fairly short order. So no, they're not good. Not so, good. Sorry I pushed the wrong button there for a minute. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> it's, see, Sunday night has now traditionally been wing at night. <laughs> Wing in, it. Take whatever comes and let it happen. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it you know, and uh, it's it's a night of uh, panic stations in any way, shape, or form. I, I mean, I should tell everybody that we knew that there was going to be a problem with Justin TV because you were meant to go live. Uh, Justin decided that it was going to fall over, so now um, we just had to really panic, get everybody across here on the live stream. I've got to say, the picture here is 100% better than it would be on Justin, as far as I'm concerned. It's it's really good. More to the point, this is this is the bit. Um, the time, the up and down time on your stream is in the order of a second. That's how loud, you, how live you are. Oh, me? In the order of a second, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, yeah. Oh, cool. Maybe I'll upgrade to the uh, high uh, version of the internet. I mean, I, I think I'm at the basic right now. I could call up the cable company and say, give me those 3,000 megabytes. <laughs> you know. Now, well, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's looking real nice, looking real good. Well, I should sure appreciate that because I tell you, like you said, um, we had tried to start Justin and I thought it was me, but when it happened to you, I'm going, all right, I'm not the only one. But uh, the last couple of shows here, I've kind of had the Midas touch. So, <laughs> this but the, the thing about it is, is because Vapor Trails is a team, um, I asked Kat to check as well, just in case it was something horrible to you and me. Kat couldn't get on either. So obviously, Justin TV is foobard, 
live stream on the other hand seems to work brilliantly mm -hmm. so we'll be going live stream as soon as we can um now the, you mentioned one thing on cat's show uh tuesday about taking vapor trails tv on the road are you going to be able to broadcast from a person's home using a mobile unit or would you have to use their equipment to do it um i've successfully managed to broadcast using a, a 3g dongle um in fact the first couple of shows we did on justin tv were done with a, a 3g dongle and it worked very well um if, if we turn up to somebody's house that's got 10 megabits upload great if we turn up to a venue that's got 10 megabits upload great um but otherwise 3g will give us about two and a half megabits in a lot of places and that's that's good enough to get a good stream away um so yeah we've got all kinds of potential uh i mean the, the road show is not necessarily going to be around people's houses we're going to try and get folks in fairly large centers uh to organize a room in a pub or something and do it that way but we'll we'll talk to people and get it all sorted out Oh, I, I would love to have you go over to Seabiscuit's house <laughs> or Del Boy's or even Willow Ferry. <laughs> <You know? laughs> that, I think that would be quite interesting. You know, I want to uh, I know I want to take the camera around here and uh, work it into the show so you guys get to see what I get to see. You know, what kind of town I live in and all the sights and sounds. I know Dave Kitson has gone on walkabouts. You know, <laughs> I'm not too much into walkabouts. I'm into driveabouts. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So there won't yes, be too much I, of that. Dave, Dave is uh, is built for stamina. Mm -hmm. yes. And he, he he's he's a he's a stamina equipped lad he is. He likes his walk. And I, on the other hand, are built rather more for comfort than speed. <laughs> there you go. Now I, I did want to show that clip at the beginning on Dave Kitson, and I really love his raw um honesty. I mean, when those CE2s came in. I think they were going around and everybody was complaining that they were leaking and there was various problems. I know some people love them and some people hate them. It's kind of a love-hate relationship. But I have to give props to Dave on how he stuck in there. Even though they kept on leaking or breaking or leaking and breaking, he kept on testing them and kept on testing them. And I want everybody out there to know that the, the Vapor Trails presenters, when they review something, they review it. I mean, they use it. Uh, and they're going to give you an honest opinion of, of either the juices or the devices and such. So um, I love the fact that I've been able to find Vapor Trails TV and they've helped me make some informed decisions. Now I'm here to help you guys. So um, let's see. Dave, can you see the screen? Yes, I can. I've got, I've got a second still here, so that's fine. Okay. Um, I got a question. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna give you three pictures, and I want you to tell me which one is the real MNK battery. Now, the dupe. Uh huh. Dupe. Uh huh. Or dupe. Uh, the last one isn't. <laughs> now, why do you say the last one isn't? Because that's entirely the wrong color. No, no, the, no, uh, no. I here, hold on, hold on. Here, here you go. <laughs> that that one that I took uh, that I took from my webcam, and yeah, it is it is off in color. Let me see if I can take it out. It did make it look a little orangish. That's it. There. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. The last one. Uh, the second one I found on eBay, which had cases of MNKs at a real good price. And, and the first one, even though it was listed as an MNK, I couldn't find any M -A -M -N -K -E traditional writings on it, you know. Have have you ever come across a, a battery that wasn't what it was supposed to be? Well, 
as far as I can make out, there are no more than three or four factories turning lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries out. And a lot of battery brands, if you like, are OEM from those factories. So Ultrafire, for instance, don't have their own factory. Um, there, are, there are only three or four. I think Panasonic is one of them. Um, Tenergy may be one. Um, and there are a couple of others, the names of which escape me at the moment. But the majority of them are all renamed and rebadged from, uh, from one of those four factories. So it's very difficult to know what's real and what's not. Well, the, the reason I ask is uh, a few months ago, you, you had a discussion on Vapor Trails TV about people coming across uh, fake batteries. And it had some people had taken the wrappings off. Now, if you're trying to take the wrapping off to see if it's a fake battery, that's one thing. But don't, don't do what I did. I took the wrapping off an ultrafire because it was 3,600 milliamps. And we all know there's no such thing as 3,600 milliamps at the moment in 18650. I took the wrapping off, and I said, yeah, I'll put it back in my silver bullet. That thing heated up so fast and turned so red, I had seconds to throw it across the room onto the floor out of the silver bullet, and then went over there. It took it three hours to cool down. And the reason being is because, let me see here. You know what that is? That's a personal, oh, um, a, P, a PSB, right? Uh, That's a piece of a protection PCB. Yeah. Now this goes on the negative side of the battery and follows the battery, this little wire, up to the positive side. Yep. Creating a, a circuit. <laughs> and when I put it in my silver bullet, it just basically went wild so a little bit of battery safety please don't cut into them don't take the wrappings off don't do what you're not supposed to read the warning labels try to stay safe lithium ion batteries have been around for a while but the technology is changing every day i mean to come up with electric cars electric everything i saw electric chainsaw today on tv so don't do what i did and uh but anyways, um, so, well, Dave, you want to kind of hang out? We could laugh for another 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got to say, I watched, watched last Tuesday's show back, and, oh, dear, dear. Mm -hmm. I haven't laughed as much in an age. Yeah, it kind of reminded me of the first show when you went over to uh, Cat's house. If anybody wants to catch that on V Clips, that uh, with the, I think I don't think it was the Fog King at that time. I think it was, wasn't there? A, no, it was. It was the. It was the Fog Kid. Yeah, the. <laughs> yeah, Kit couldn't. Uh, Cat couldn't stop giggling. So. Um, well, I'm going to go ahead and play you out so you can get back to watching this wonderful show. I think we've got 15 minutes left. What I'm going to come up with, I have no idea. It'll be interesting. See you guys here in 15.
Hey, we're back. Are we live? We're live. <laughs> That'd be good. Live. We're live. Um, please bear with me for just one moment. I had this up, but it kind of disappeared on me. Let's see. My mouse is looking and looking. Uh, let's see. Scarlett Johansson. No, that's not it. Where did it go? It's coming. It's coming. You're looking for Debbie Joe's Dallas. No. <laughs> I am looking for. Oh, come on. I'm sorry about this, people. Just look at me and smile. And throw tomatoes at the screen here. Um, gosh, I just had it right here. Oh, gosh. I look like a dweeb. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did it go? Um, just a few more seconds, people. I know it's here. Uh, but -ba -ba -ba. Hey, come on. Um, gosh. I'm sorry, people. We'll just uh, talk about this. Um, the other morning, I was watching a television program at 3 o'clock in the morning, and uh, my ears perked up because they were talking about electronic cigarettes while flying. Now, uh, the Obama administration here in the United States will be coming up with a bill restricting any vaping on international or national flights in bound to the United States or around the United States. Now, as a vapor, I'm going, come on. I, I, you know, I just got into vaping and I'm enjoying the liberty that it gives me. Uh, bar owners are letting me vape in their bars. Restaurants are letting me vape. Uh, even some hospitals are making disposable e-cigs available to their smoking patients, you know, to kind of calm them down. Um, so I, when, when they came up with this, I'm going, boy, this is just another attack against me. But if you think about it, you still emit vapor and you still emit um, what might be perceived as fire. <laughs> so on a plane that may not be good, so for a security issue, I can see why they would want to ban vaping. Personally, I think they should set vaping in a restricted area on, like they used to on planes. Um, or no, I wouldn't say a restricted area. I'm just saying an area where they would normally expect vaping to go on. So, But even that, you're still emitting smoke and maybe somebody could be sitting in there with an underwear bomb or something and smoking. And, and that, that might not even go over well. So uh, I thought I'd ask everyone in chat, what do you think about the upcoming ban that may happen in the United States on vaping? And uh, hi fi is still with me, and he's going to monitor the chat and uh, see what you guys come up with. Any interesting questions, thoughts? <laughs> Uh, T.H. Jahar, uh, Mike, has said he loves the reason they gave to ban it, because it looks like smoking and will upset people. So, um, I mean, I can agree that in certain circumstances, you're still going to run into the problems uh, that vaping runs into with smoking. But they're just going to be a little different. Um, I mean, you can argue the fact that it doesn't, make people smell the secondhand smoke even if that existed um, is is no longer in play but you still have a you still have the problem in this application in air flight of smoke so um, I'm glad that we've come as far as we have in the vaping world we've got a lot more freedom a lot more liberties but when somebody comes up to you and challenges you vaping Try to consider, you know, what they're thinking at the moment and try to inform them as much as possible. Um, you went up to a, a, an Albanian restaurant up in northern England, Hi-Fi? 
we, we don't have an Albanian restaurant <laughs> up here, um, which is, may, may or may not be a pity, I don't know. But just, just to, to quickly hit on one or two things that are coming up in chat for you, um, Steve Mack, it's a good point as well, has said most people use looky likeies and they're the ones that will upset people. Now, I can well understand, actually, you know, if, if somebody's uh, wandering to the loo on an aircraft and, and they see a, a white battery with a brown tip and a red end coming on and off, they may well think that you've lit a cigarette or God only knows what ructions that could cause. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I hate lookalikes to start with. I think everybody knows that. Um mm -hmm. Rusty's made the point that the vapor falls rather than rises. That's true, it does. Um, certainly, I think I managed to get through about a mill and a half in a four-hour flight from uh, Newcastle across to Lanzarote and about the same coming back, um, stealthing it as you do. Um, Dave Ross says, how can they stop it? Stealth, that's fair enough. Bez says, let's face it, we'll all just stealth it anyway. Also true. Um Sea Biscuits made the point that it will only upset people because for the last 20 years or so, the various governments have done their level best to denormalise smoking. Um, Gary Dibley says, all you need to do is put it on the free flight safety film, job done. Then the buggers could sell them. And he's so right. Mm -hmm. You know, if if before they, before they did that, you've got exits here, here, here and here and the toilets are there and there. If they were to uh, put on the, uh, the safety film that they put on, ladies and gentlemen, this is a no-smoking flight, but electronic cigarettes, which look like this, and which are on sale from the trolley dollies, are allowed. Please do not be concerned if you see anyone looking like man with white hair blowing great clouds of what is vapour. It is not dangerous to you or your offspring or your health. Thank you for your attention. Kindly spend lots of money with the trolley dogs. Well, see that, see that that would be perfect because it, let's say you had color coded electronic looky likeies. So if uh, the stewardess is walking by, I think they call themselves flight attendants now. But if they saw a gray with a white wrapper around it or something, and look like a candy cane or something, something they had purchased from the airlines, uh, I think you're right. I think that would be great. It would make everyone's uh, a little bit more at ease like that's a vapor you know give me one I want one too you know and plus you can make them all one flavor like potpourri so you're actually potpourri in the plane while you're vaping you know so but that's a good point uh, I know my brother works for American Airlines down in Dallas Texas and I always thought it would be perfect for airlines to adopt exactly what Gary said you know so, well, I'm glad that that uh, discussion turned into something. I thought everybody was just going, ah, screw America. We just got a good idea. We got these nudges in the UK. They're going to give us everything we want. Yeah. Well, hey, you can't knock the nudges. That's, uh, that's, 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 I'm quite encouraged by that. Uh, I just tried to read down the chat. This is flying up quite. Uh, people are talking about it quite a lot, Mike. Um Willow Ferry says Ryan Air sells them one at a time, to which uh, Steve Mack has come back and said they sell inhalators at an inflated place. They do, but at least they're doing something to keep uh, we nicotine addicts happy on a flight. Uh, Liam suggests that they could actually sell e-cigs in the shape of a jet plane, which would be cool. <laughs> John Bon Juan says e-cigs have been on USA News, albeit very little. Why can't UK TV News show everyone what's it all about? Well, they did a couple of years back, but um, mm. in, in, in daft ways, really. Uh, but if, if I recall correctly, Jason Crop has made an appearance on the telly talking about them, so that's good. Vapor Man said, following on from the ones that look like an aircraft, vapes <laughs> <laughs> which is good. Um, Del Boy says, we do like the nudges. Um, and Buzz has said, is uh, all, uh, Bez, sorry, all he's seen on the UK TV about e-cigs just slates them. Well, we'll try and do something about that. Vape Dude says, there is still nicotine in the exhaled vapor, though. People that don't smoke probably do not want to be breathing this in, even if it probably would not hurt them. Um, the jury's out on that one, Vape Dude. The jury's out on that one. Um, all of the tests that have been done so far, and I, I know it's not that many, uh, tell us that the... Uh, 
the amount of nicotine that's in exhaled vapour is exceedingly vanishingly small. Indeed, Murray Laugerson was unable to find any. Uh, and you'd probably get more in your moussaka that you get in that little thing that they serve you on the planes anyway. Um, and Bear says that what we need is some high-profile stars to start vaping and carry the flag for us. Well, yeah, there's one golfer doing it at least. Um, and Seabiscuit comes back and says there would be trace amounts of nicotine at best. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I believe there's... Uh... Oh, his name is Fleeting, uh, a baseball player, a famous baseball player that's tied into electronic cigarettes here in the States. Uh, I believe it's a looky like brand. Um, I could probably get that information for everyone Friday. But we all know that uh, Brad Pitt has been using electronic cigarettes. Uh, Johnny Depp used electronic cigarettes three times in that movie. The tourist, yeah, um, Derek Clark, Clark, yeah, the golfer, mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Sheen, as has been mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Mary Bendy Toy, sorry, Barry Manilow. <laughs> um, yeah, I just heard. Know. Yeah, he was just interviewed the other day on Fox News, and I think he had mentioned electronic cigarettes too. Yeah, you know, Heidi Klum. Who's Heidi Klum? Heidi Klum. Ooh. <laughs> okay, Gary Dibley's pointed out that Mary Bendy Toy uses a gooseneck to get it past the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Copa, Copa Cabana. <laughs> and all that I'm baking banana in my. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> film stars with silver bullets or GGs or even Prevary. Mm. Um, Catherine Heigl. Harlequin69 points out Catherine Heigl. Mm. Why somebody with a 69 in their handle thinks of Catherine Heigl? <laughs> I shouldn't put those two together. The <laughs> mental image is just, yes. <laughs> Cat, wants, Cat wants Johnny Depp. Mm. Microsoft wants uh, Brad Pitt. Okay. Hey, hey, I sent Cat and Sev Johnny Depp's at France, so if they want to go get them, they can go down there. <laughs> is that why they haven't been at home all weekend? Mm. Yeah, they, they've been scurrying across the channel there. And, uh, oh, Mighty Mouse, can you kind of watch my show? I'm not <coughs> feeling good, but they're actually Mike, going to. <laughs> Mike, I just need to interrupt Willow Fairy Corner now. <laughs> and Cat, join her. That's the pair of you on the naughty step. <laughs> they're discussing what they want to do with Johnny Depp, Mike. <laughs> not just what, but where. Oh, okay. Cat being naughty? Yes. Mm, I've never heard that. <laughs> Apparently, it, it, it looks as though it's her and Willow with Johnny Depp. <laughs> well, I'm going to see if I can't get one of those people to talk to us. And uh, I think they'd be more than willing to. And I think it would make a great interview. You know, if I could become chums with Brad Pitt, I don't know, maybe he'll invite me down to New Orleans to play cards. <laughs> You'll have to remember to take an orange box for him to stand on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, Leonardo DiCaprio, I think, has been smoking electronic cigarettes, too. He has, yes. Yeah. So it's getting and, out there. And Ollie Merce. And Ollie Merce. Yeah. There's, there's plenty of them there. I mean, we've come a long way since April and the FDA scare, you know, hey, we're going to regulate these under the tobacco law and uh, you guys are going to have to bow down to us. And now we're at the... The, the nudgers coming out, hey, you know, this might be a really good idea for smokers, you know, that don't want to do the gum and don't want to do the patch or the pills that make you turn it. You know, I, I had mentioned the pills to a, a friend of mine the other day because Rhonda had tried them too. And on the pills themselves, I'm not a doctor, I don't make this stuff up. <laughs> but on the pills, it says it actually drives you crazy. And this neighbor said that his friend had taken them and it drove him absolutely mad. So, hey, you, you stopped smoking, but you killed a family of five. Woohoo! <laughs> Priceless, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All good. All, All good. good. All good. So, um, well, you know, let's see if this works. Maybe it does. Hey, you know what that means. 
It's time for Mighty Mouse to head to the house. I had a wonderful time. Um, I hope you did too. Great subject on the uh, airplane thing. I appreciate Hi-Fi coming in and helping out. Um, but that's what we're all here for. We're all here to have fun and help each other out. And uh, check out the live stream. Um, we got that set up, right, Hi-Fi? Yeah, I'm going to look at putting it uh, on the live stream for tomorrow night if I can work out how to do it. If, uh, and if I can't, I'm going to be hunting around through the room to help. Okay. <laughs> well, check that out soon. I'll have live chat and uh, be just a rolling a bunch of shows. So it should uh, pan out to be a good time also. So anyways, uh, thanks for hanging out with Mighty Mouse and High Five. And... Uh, Monday night, 8 o'clock, Vapor Mist. 8 o'clock Tuesday, the Witching Hour. Wednesday, 9 o'clock, the Vapor Trails Talk. 9 o'clock Thursday, Dave Dorn and Hi-Fi Stud um, with the Haze Hour. And then Friday, everybody get ready. We're going to go back into the corner. There's no telling what I'll come up with Friday. So, anyways, thanks for coming, and we all love you. Have yourself a good rest of the Sunday. Bye. Thank you.